uh, like to pop and good, 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 good. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be today. Um, thank you for hanging out with us here at the, with the Power Addicts. Um, this is our Power Addicts August hangout. And this month we are doing something just a little bit different. We are moving across the globe. We're trying to use, try to get um, get you be in different time zones so we can share the love of Power Addicts mania. Although everyone, the Power Addicts everywhere. So, uh, so it's such a great time. And thank you all for hanging out with us this morning. Um, so let's kind of go ahead and just kind of jump into uh, into the meeting because we we would have a, a hard stop this this morning, but. Um, to start off this morning, um, let's say, let's give uh, intros to our guest, um, which is uh, Anj. Anj, good morning. Hamitika, thank you. Good morning. Geetha as well. Good morning. Not our, our usual Geetha. Yeah, we're new Geetha today. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> the other Geetha. So good morning. <laughs> And for this, good morning. Thank you all for hanging out with us and uh, and being guests on the show today. You are muted for, for the, the oh okay. So um so normally you um run a business that we start off for us is just saying uh congratulations to our new MVPs. And uh the one thing about MVP um that you will know you notice sometimes you think people are MVPs already. And you find out that they're not, and you play. Like, what do you mean? This person is not an MVP. Uh, so a few MVPs that I, I, I know of, um, and there's more. Um, uh, Emma, Emma, I think I am Darcy, um, a Darby. Emma's a new MVP. Um, what's our MVPs we got, guys? We have Emma. We have Joe Hi. Griffin. Ashley Rogers. Ashley Rogers. Yep. Yeah. Ashley Rogers, yes, another one surprised. Thought she was MVP already. <laughs> and I don't um, know, I mean, if there are some other from the the, the Asia uh, Pacific region, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you guys uh, know me that we miss, and there's so many. Um, please give them uh, kudos and congratulations. Um, and from us, thank you all for being the being the spirit. Um, that keeps our platform moving and, and teaching um, the uh, the community. So thank you so, so, so much. So with that being said, we also want to um, talk a little bit about the, um, the uh, community call. Um, So that's on. So the next, I mean, just wanted to uh, give a shout out here to the. So the Power Apps community call happens every Wednesday, third Wednesday uh, of month at 8 a.m. Pacific time, which is probably 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m. India time. And I, or sorry, 11 a.m. Eastern. And I, I, I don't know. I there are too many time zones to talk about there. Yes. But uh, just go into the link aka.ms slash power apps community call. And uh, the next one is on September 8. Um, so yeah, watch out for that. And uh, um, did I, I'm guessing there's not the one on, I think this August one already happened. But yeah. Uh, or no, I'm I'm probably missing that out. I, I'll have to check that and get back to you. But just go to that link, aka.ms slash power apps community call and um, do join this call as well. You have so many great people coming on that as well, talking about power apps. So yep. Yeah, a lot of good a lot of a lot of good information um, and great camaraderie um, on those calls. So so yeah, make sure if you can make it. Uh, make it and they're also they're recorded as well um and so you can still go back and see the uh, recorded videos uh if you if you can't make it live so um and the same thing for the power addicts we also record our hangout um so um we have a we have a website as well we can kind of go back in um and catch videos if you miss them uh, so great content and so if you have time please take a look all right so let's go ahead and get this knowledge session going. 
Uh, so we want to start off um, with our first guest. Um, and our first guest is Hamitika, and she's going to bring us some information on, uh, on Power Apps. What is a Power Hi. Thank you. Hi, I'll just start sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Is it visible? Uh, it's coming. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, so before I start, I would like to thank all of you for giving me a chance to come and present here. So I am Himantika Mitra. I am an undergraduate student from India. So it's good evening from India and good morning and good afternoon to the rest of you. So I'm also a Microsoft student ambassador and this is how I started with my Power Platform journey. Which Did we I think lose her? I think yeah, I broke. think we lose, lost her for a bit. She'll come back. Maybe we yeah. can ask her to um, stop her video. So maybe she'll get more bandwidth. Yeah, bandwidth. Yeah. She can do that sharing a presentation thing and maybe one of us can run it for her. Yeah, that's a good idea. The trials and tribulations of online. <laughs> yes. I always say crush three go uh, goldfish. Uh, Mr. The bait goldfish. <laughs> I was going, I was going live on one thing a few months back and they, and, and the Americans were like, yeah, you need to reach, you need to like make sure you're hardwired and like you've restarted everything. I'm like, dude, I've got like 200 megabits. It's no problem. And then this minute I went online, the whole thing went, Doof! <laughs> oh man you know we may have to uh if we can go ahead and um and move her back to a little later in the in the in the meeting and um, that's probably a good idea yeah uh, um geetha geetha and um Pradesh, are you guys ready to uh to present now yeah okay let's do that let's let's uh let's add um let's add um i mean to go to the end um, and go ahead. You guys can go ahead and um, and start to uh, your your presentation if you don't mind. Oh yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. This happens nowadays. No. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, before I start, um, thank you everyone for giving us this opportunity. So today uh, from Singapore, we are going to present as a team. So it's going to be the same topic, and we're going to split, and you know each one of us are going to speak. So. I have my partners in crime before I proceed. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, that's yes. great. So yeah, my partners in crime today, Ansh um, and Pradesh. Uh, so we are going to present on, uh, on we are going to present, uh, going and, to present talk. and talk. Yeah, yeah. we're going to present going and to talk, present on, talk AI on AI Builder. On AI builder. I and hear some echo. Yeah. Okay, I think you should be good now. Yeah, that's great. So all three of us are going to talk about the AI builder. So I will give an intro um, just to get, set the background. Uh, we will start from cognitive service and how we had AI builder in Power Apps. And then, you know, and will give uh, some demo steps on how quickly you can create, uh, you can use or add artificial intelligence into your power apps. And finally, Pradesh will give uh, the tips and tricks and you know the best practices on um, adding this AI builder, how, what all you should take care of things. All right, so now let me go ahead and present my screen. Hey, I don't have option to share my screen. Um, I think I did that now, everyone. <laughs> Seriously, I don't find. Can, oh, you are not able to share? No, I don't find the option. Can you, I guess, 
can you quickly do, send that presentation this yeah, yeah can, i'll i'll yeah. do that i'll do that yeah but yeah that's <laughs> It's strange, no, yeah. yeah. We usually yeah. have people presenting. That's new. Yeah, a month ago, I was able to present, so I'm yeah. surprised. That's right. Just give me a moment. We all love technology. Yes. <laughs> it is not helping us today. Yeah, it looks like a customer demo, right? You go to the demo, <laughs> thinks what it was is working, stops working. <laughs> just made you a presenter again, just to give it a kick in the bum. So let's see if that does it. God, bloody technology. Can I buy it, it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I get any one of your email ID, please? Hello. Mm -hmm. Can can you check one still? Yeah. By the way, uh, if if you're able to present. Yeah, I'll quickly check that before I do. No, I don't find that option at all. Mm. Okay. I think I got the issue. <laughs> it's okay. Um, does do you Anj or Pradesh? Do one of you guys want to try share uh, presenting? Um, yeah. While the we open it up on our end. To me, is that PDF file? Are you sure it's? I do have the PDF file. Hey, I've sent to you, Wewe. Okay. Um, magic is we'll be able to cut this out of the final edit. Don't worry, it'll be really like if it can his magic snippet yeah. tool. They'll just be boom. <laughs> okay, as the file oh. comes through, maybe we'll just give an introduction so that uh, others do not wait. Um, so yeah, I have. Uh, I I am from Avnad. I'm an enterprise architect at Avnad, and I have meaning I am completely into C for the last uh, 16 years, and recently into Power Platform. Yeah, and you know, uh, getting into community, I find this happening. Uh, whatever you might know, you get into community, you catch up with the latest things, and you know you. You be up to date and you feel, you know, when you visit your college days, you feel like, you know, you're you're studying again and you're getting those college days, right? Exactly the same thing happens when you come into a community. Irrespective of your age, irrespective of your experience, uh, you know, you get to learn every day and in different uh, journals, you um, enhance your knowledge. That's what I've seen. Um, and yeah, quickly, can I do a check? With Vivek, have you received my uh, file? I'm no, not it. Nope. <laughs> okay. So, Anj, it shouldn't. Um, it should be it? okay if you can press in the PDF. Uh, we can just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help. Yeah, we have been hearing about AI builder, right? I don't want to make everyone wait, so let me just keep going with the yeah. uh, normal stuff that all of us know, right? So, yeah, if you can move to the next slide, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, this is a quick introduction and I had my link there. That's OK, I can just ping you. And yeah, we have been hearing about AI Builder for quite a while. And as we know that, uh, you know, just before moving into AI Builder, we have cognitive service from Azure and cognitive service. We have language and vision, right? That gives us all of these AI Builder capabilities into Power Platform. So what Microsoft has done is to utilize the those background platforms um, and they have made it easy uh, to bring it into the no low code, no code platform. So AI Builder gives us, it's a turnkey solution that uh, brings the power of AI uh, through a point and click experience. You can just add your uh, 
add your control into the app or you go into into the formula bar you add uh, you will be able to utilize your um, AI builder or the pre built ones or your custom built custom trained ones. So it basically improves business performance by automating the processes and predicting the outcomes early. You can easily add intelligence, right? When you do just drag and drop, add it to your apps, that will be an easy way to add uh, artificial intelligence into the business apps. So anyone from the business user who do who does it, it will be a cakewalk for the person to do it. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, so if you intend to do uh, you, you do an to utilize an AI builder, then obviously you will choose an AI model and you will connect to the data and then you will train and tailor your AI model right um, as you get your outcome. If it if it doesn't work for you, you had to retrain it and you get it to the point where it works efficiently and then you will start using the insights from AI model. These are the quick four steps or five steps that you follow when you had to or add artificial intelligence into your business process. If we can move to the next step, it will be great. Yeah, so uh, you know, I just there are two major categories that uh, Microsoft has given us and it's an um, you know, it's an it's it's keep it's kept on updated and you see a lot of models which you saw earlier. You you saw you see a lot of additions to it now and you will see additions to it going forward as well. If you see the background uh, platform is Azure Cognitive Services, we have language vision and the predictive uh, prediction also is being used. And we have custom AI models and pre-built AI models. Pre-built AI models is nothing but ready to use. It's, it's ready to eat stuff that we just take it, heat it and use it, right? The same way we have ready to use, um, wherein the data that is used for the training, the model is already been done by Microsoft. And you know, you just go use the control or you go to Power Automate and use it. So these pre-built AI models that are available from the Power Platform are business card reader, text recognition, category classification, key phrase extraction, beside which I've given from which cognitive service it has been derived. So basically business card reader means, you know, you give an image and then it's been um, trained to obviously deduct a business card and then get those details from it. Similarly, if you see uh, text recognition, it's, it's more about um, getting all of the content from your image and then uh, reading all of the text from it. The language uh, based ones are category classification, key phrase, extraction, language deduction, sentiment analysis. And there are two things in preview now, which are receipt processing um, from vision and text translation from language. So as we go further, I'll, I just have uh, more details on this and we have custom AI models out of which uh, it, these have been there for quite long, so most of you would be knowing about it. Category classification from language, entity extraction from language is in preview, and forms processing, um, object detection and prediction are there already uh, quite a while now. OK, um, could you please move on to the next slide, please? Yeah, pre-built AI models, business card reader, this I've already spoken about it. You can use it in Power Automate and Power Apps. Um, it detects the business card from the image and uh, extracts the information. Uh, supported language, it just supports only English and the image formats. As you can see, it supports JPEG, PNG and the BMP more, uh, formats. And the size is 6 MB max that you can provide. The image size should be maximum of 6 MB. Category classification, you can use it in Power Automate and Power Apps. It basically classifies the text, analyze and classifies the text into certain categories. If it is a custom model, you can say what are the different classifications that you would want to uh, put up with and to start with under category classification Microsoft has provided a uh, customer feedback pre-built model. So basically what it does is uh, you can use this wherever you get your customer feedback or service um, or any of your online platform right online portal or so where you get the customer feedback you can um, just uh, pump in those feedbacks into this model and then you will tr you can try to categorize it and accordingly pick it and uh, you know try to uh, optimize your performance uh, be it system people uh, or you know your products 
So basically uh, it can categorize uh, into issues, complement customer service, documentation, price and billing and stuff. So this is basically, you know, um, it's it's been uh, pre-built. So these are the only options that you have. And then you, you see the supported languages. It just supports English, French, German, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, Chinese simplified. So this is basically the these languages. If you see, it'll be it'll keep on repeating wherever you have text based, uh, wherever text based, uh, um, you know, AI models are there. These languages are the supported languages as of now, and uh, um, this keeps improving day by day. So you can uh, always go to Microsoft Docs to get the latest uh, languages that are being supported by these AI models. The size is also provided an entity extraction as such. It also does the same. It goes ahead and analyzes the text and then classifies them into predefined categories. Unlike the category classification over here, it will be able to identify your data like um, as in whether it's an email, continent, color like that. So this helps you to transform, read some unstructured text and uh, get into meaning transform that into a structured data so that it becomes machine readable. Um, this can be very much helpful if you wanted to um, get in a lot of documents, what you've scanned and kept and you wanted to get some structured data out of it. This might be of great use to you and supported languages. As I said earlier, the same set of supported languages are there here as well. So let's move on to the next model. Um, yeah. So key phrase extraction. Uh, if you see key phrase extraction, this is like you you given your text um, and from that text it tries to identify the key text like you know key phrases um, as in for an example like um, today is a great day or your service was really a good service. So this good service will be a key phrase um, that will be identified and which will be given by the AI model at the end of it. So supported languages you should always uh, check the text analytics API v3 uh, from the cognitive service. You can go to Microsoft site and check what are the supported languages by this API and those languages will be supported by this pre-built AI model as well. Um, as you move on to the language deduction, this is uh, more of uh, you know when you given a text document, it will tell you uh, what language it is in and unlike uh, the you know the language text or the script that we call over here you just get the ENFR unlike the typical uh, you know way of saying it as ENUS or EN um, you know any other country it just says EN French like that so it just provides a script of the language and then a score zero through one wherever you find score right from any AI model going forward as I uh, keep explaining um, if you get a score which is closer to one, which means it's confident. Uh, it's meaning the higher confident it is about uh, uh, identifying that in that language. Okay, supported languages, as, as I said earlier, it follows a cognitive service, text analytics API v3, and you can follow that to identify the languages. Sentiment analysis, it just identifies the sentiment of the text, uh, whether it is neutral, positive, negative, mix it, and then it tries to give you a score as well. Um, as it goes towards one, it is confident uh, as such. Can you go, move to the next slide? Yeah, receipt processing and text translation are in preview. Basically, it uses uh, receipt processing. It uses OCR and you know it detects the printed or handwritten text and extract key information from receipts. Um, it supports supported language. Uh, it is only supporting US English receipts right now uh, because it's been pre-built uh, based on that and file formats JPEG, PNG or PDF. If it's PDF, the sizes are being provided. You can go to Microsoft Docs to see the restrictions and uh, limitations that are as of today, whatever are there. If you move to text translation, um, you can use it only in Power Automate. And if you want to use it in Power Apps, you had to go to the uh, formula bar and you can utilize that. It translates your text uh, into a different language. It supports more than 60 languages um, and it will try to give you the script of the language that is being provided as well, the input text. OK, um, if we go on to the custom model, right? Um, yeah, could you please move on to the next slide? Yeah. 
The custom AI models, if you see the same set of uh, ones that we had in pre-built, we have in customer AI model as well. So when should you go to custom AI model? Wherein the pre-built ones are not uh, satisfying your criteria, then you move on to your custom AI model. Um, your category classification and your entity extraction basically um, Apart from the list, whatever is there in the pre-built model, you want to classify uh, to further, uh, you know, the common business terms that you have. You might go ahead and use the entity extraction custom model. You can train and you can use it. Category classification as such, uh, you would be able to utilize whenever the categories, whatever are provided. Uh, it is only available for the customer feedback, right? Rather, you wanted to use it for a sales or marketing purpose. You you have a different set of category classification. Yes, you can go ahead and use the uh, custom AI model for that. Uh, could you move on to the next, please? Yeah, forms processing and object detection. Forms processing is equivalent to receipt processing. It's somewhat closer to that. Forms processing, you take a printed receipt or uh, you know an invoice, and then you tell in which place the date comes in and you know the list of items. Um, as you train the model and then uh, you you try to give in those invoices, it automatically detects those content and it gives you that JSON format kind of which can be used further uh, for your machine readable business decisions or whatsoever. OK, object detection as such, it basically helps to maintain inventory because you give um, a lot of E meaning like images about your product so that as you take a picture, it will try to tell you, OK, this is the product and uh, how many items are there. It, it might help you to count or if a technician is trying to fix the issue with the product um, by taking a picture, he will get the manual. Uh, he will be able to fetch the manual of the relevant product. So that's where object detection helps uh, without the serial numbers and stuff. You would be able to uh, go ahead and uh, utilize object detection. We have the last custom AI model, which I will quickly go through. Um, could you please move to the next? Yeah, prediction. So basically, what is prediction? We have been, uh, we need some decisions, right, in business processes as we automate. So you need to make a yes or no decision, or it might be, you know, um, whether uh, when you will be able to receive the shipment, or you know um, where it might be a multiple possible outcomes, right? From that uh, question, you might want to receive uh, multiple outcomes. Could be possible answer, and also um, wherever you are trying to uh, check the probability of. Uh, uh, getting that right, like um, a visitor, a returning visitor to your portal, how uh, how good he can purchase the product like that. So the answer could be a probability. So in this place, prediction plays a vital role and you can use your historical data. If at all you have your archivals, you could use that data to um, basically train these models. The only uh, the only thing that I see as of today is all your training data should be within CDS for you to go ahead and train your model. With this, actually, I come to the end of, uh, you know, um, giving you a quick glance of all of these AI models. And now uh, my friend Ange will go through and tell you how um, quick it is and how easy it is to embed the, these AI models into an app. All right, thank you. Thanks, Gaeta. Uh, OK, so as um, Gaeta mentioned, some of the um, overview of the AI builder. So right now I'm just only sharing what are the steps that I use when I'm building the AI, uh, AI builder using the form processing. So my name is Mary Angela Ange Serbales. You can call me Ange, an application analyst, so I don't want to more into detail about that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Ange Serbales. So these are the uh, AI builder that is available in a power platform. So you could also create an application with the AI uh, quickly. So, and then there's also an AI builder that is pre-built model that you could insert in your application without training the model. So these are the two new uh, pre-built model, the receipt processing, which is mentioned by Getha a while ago. You could also check out uh, Vivek um, YouTube about this uh, receipt processing. Also, the other one is the text translation, which is only available in Power Automate only. There are three uh, simple steps that I use when I build the AI 
builder using the form processing, I'm going to use the form processing model. So first step that I use is create. Next is second is train. So I need to train the model. And then three, I'm going to publish the model that I created. So when creating the model, so you're just, go, uh, you, when are using the form processing model, so you're going to create a model and then you're going to upload your documents with a minimum of five documents. And also you could um, increase it 20x uh, to 20. And then if you have a, more documents, it will have a better result. So after you do upload the documents, and then you're going to analyze the document. So after analyzing that it, we are going to the next step, which is we're going to select the fields. We're going to train the fields. So the good thing about the new update for the form processing is you can now draw the fields, resize, resize it, and then it can also read multiple tables in the form processing. So what you need to do is just only read uh, read the uh, read the documents or uh, read the fields in the documents and then after selecting the fields we are going to go in the uh, step three which is we're going to train our model uh, we, we are going to uh, publish our model so you can only use your model once you publish it so and if you want to update the model you can just select edit models and then retrain it once you publish your model so you can all you can use it now in your power uh, canvas app so you go going to insert it in your ai builder using the form processor and then bind your fields in the form processor in, in your canvas app so you just bind the fields and then publish it so you can quickly add an ai in your power automate using the ai builder actions so infusing ai with your application is just easy as Step one, two, three, pub, create, pub, uh, create, train, and publish. So to learn more about it, so you just go to the uh, this document, and also one of my friend Pradesh will give you some tips and tricks when building the AI builder. So, uh, go, um, Pradesh. Thanks, Anj. Uh, thanks, Gita. So share my screen. Uh, just. I hope all can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'm, my name is Pradesh Dhalan. Uh, I work in uh, Tech Mahindra as a senior software engineer in Singapore. Uh, thanks, Gita and Anj, for setting the platform for AI Builder. Uh, we're going to see about uh, the quick tips and good practices we should use before training the model and how, the, how you prepare the data and then how you push it to the uh, model. So. Let's go one by one. Uh, like Gita told, we have two models, custom models and pre-built models. Uh, we're going to talk about only the custom model now. When we train our model, what are the best practices we should follow in order to achieve a good performance in the um, AI? Okay. Uh, in terms of prediction, uh, like, told, uh, like Gita, given the background, it's, it's used to uh, let them know the likelihood of the business outcomes. Uh, it can be a Boolean field of true or false. You can have multiple uh, outputs and uh, uh, one or two outputs you can get. Uh, data requirements are like uh, minimum 50 records you should use in total and uh, 10 historical outputs for each class to get the best results for at least 1000 records. And the good practices is like data quality. Uh, you should always provide a good quality data with no empty fields and then quality data. And uh, data quantity, uh, the enough data you provide, the enough result you get. You always have the prediction model uh, now to uh, uh, let you know the prediction out of it. You can, you can know the prediction model score. If you find the prediction model score is low, you can, you can always uh, try to add more data and then try to improve your prediction model. So uh, unwanted bias and irrelevant or misleading fields. Uh, some fields may be irrelevant or maybe misleading and you should avoid, try to avoid those fields, which may cause some uh, problem in your prediction score. So it's good to avoid those things. And the accuracy is always between 50 to 100 percent, but uh, it's always in your hands. If you provide the good quality data to the AI model, it will always try to cope up and then uh, bring it a good score to you. Yeah, so that's with the uh, prediction model. Let's move on to the form processing. 
from processing uh, it's it's more related to reading extracting and then process data from scan emails pdf and then images uh, here the data requirements are like uh, 10 to uh, 5 to 10 sample documents with the same layout the layout is a uh, is a uh, key here we have to provide the same layout and then uh, specifics like uh, jpg and png and pdf not max like 4 mb should always be like latin like alphabet in english and uh, quality of images should be around 530 to 100 other 4 420 to 420 pixels uh, and then some of the tricks uh, tips for your training data is like the requirements which we discussed here the file size should not be more than 50 mb and the clip should not have more than 500 pages and the image dimensions are between these pixels and then the optimization would be like uh, the more documents you tag, the more AI builder will learn to better recognize your fields. And then you might have the same uh, invoices uh, uh, from the same the same uh, provider, uh, but it can have uh, different samples for different months. So that will improve the AI builder uh, to get to get hold of it and then try to improve score. And uh, you can always uh, uh, if you don't want to, if you want to exclude few pages of the uh, uh, your uh, form, uh, you can always uh, the PDF out of it and then try to feed only that information. Uh, you can avoid the relevant information. You can always provide to in, uh, uh, add only the relevant pages or the PDFs to your uh, AI model. That's optimization tips for the form processing. And the limitation is like currently it can't process the nested, nested tables inside your form and then uh, check boxes or radio boxes it can't read. That's the current limitation. The PDF document is 50 pages. We just uh, find the pages, sorry. And then uh, uh, fillable PDFs are not uh, currently it's a limitation. You can't uh, you can't uh, do this. And the path PDFs it should uh, it should uh, the password protected. If you have anything, you should always uh, not to use the password protected PDFs. It will uh, not take into consideration the uh, some errors. And uh, object detection you can move to the object detection. Object detection is more like an uh, you can using you can recognize and uh, count on your visual objects. Uh, Pepsi GIG was a, was a great example. I think Pepsi is using the uh, object detection tool in their uh, audit purpose in multiple stores across the US. I think they're using this uh, object detection not to audit their uh, uh, their, uh, their products in uh, the US stores. So that's a great uh, uh, use case for us. And uh, the specifics here is like uh, you should use JPG, PNG, and PW formats of images. The max is like 6 MB. And the data requirement is like minimum 15 images per object. So if you're trying to uh, take an uh, object detection, you should use like minimum 15 images per object. And uh, we can see like uh, use diverse images. So if you take, if you see an image here, you should give more lighting to the image, not not to the more AI to understand its uh, its texture. And then the object size, uh, you should take pictures from uh, different angles so that we can get the object size so the AI model can understand the object size and the background uh, keep your objects in a different background so that the AI model can understand uh, how it looks with the different with different backgrounds and camera angle is a must uh, try to try to take your object in different camera angles in order to understand your object so uh, in a compre uh, comprehensively like you should take at least like within 15 more than like you can you can take more than 15 images also it will improve your uh, AI model's performance so that's with the object detection so we discussed these steps and then optimization is like uh, more number of pictures for each object, more number of more accurate of the results. And uh, you use images that represent a normal use. Uh, don't try to complicate the image. Uh, try to make, uh, keep it as simple as the images with, uh, with not keeping two, two or three uh, objects in between. Try to keep it as simple as possible. And we try to uh, draw a rectangle. Try to draw a rectangle. Uh, try to draw a rectangle around the object. This one, not not letting it know or uh, aligning with another object. Try to uh, draw a crisp uh, angle around the item, and then uh, use the same number of images for each object. If you have ten objects uh, in your hand and you want the AI model to predict, so try to use like uh, same number of images for each model so that uh, your AI builder can pick it up. And that is one of the tips for the uh, object detection. We can move it with the category classification. Uh, category classification, it's like uh, it's used to review and then tag classify large values of text to text sentiment analysis. And it's used to improve, uh, improve the customer experience and the valuable insights. A uh, few specifics here are uh, the languages used is English, French, German, Dutch, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese for now. And the data requirements are like test and tags to be in the same entity. 
all the tags used in one field use a delimiter. You should use a delimiter in one field, and then a maximum like five hundred characters per text item, and minimum of like fifty text items per tag. So that's the limitation what we have. And uh, tips on training for data is like data quality, no high rate of missing values. Uh, try to try to uh, 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 do this. Then uh, check type for check uh, check for typos. If there is any typos, try to address the typos, and then. Uh, If there's inconsistent capitalization or the uh, case census, try to address the case census, and then uh, check for inconsistent and incorrect labels. If you're trying to tag with the wrong label, then obviously your AI model will not perform good. So try to tag with your proper labels, and then try to remove duplicate and irrelevant fields. If you feel some fields are irrelevant, uh, kindly try to remove it in order to improve the performance. And at least track 100 records per tag in order to have your balance use case of tags in the data, which means whenever you try to tag a field. Tag it to your at least like uh, use same number of amount of tags for each item, so your AI builder will perform as good as you expect. And uh, try to train with the data similar to your actual text, which will improve your uh, performance. And I would also like to uh, give a quick uh, background about how to deploy your AI model. So once you develop your uh, uh, AI model in the sandbox environment, uh, you can you can add it to your hand managed solutions, and then you can. Take the hand managed solution and then push it to your uh, uh, test or uh, any environment as a managed solutions, and then you can push it to your production uh, as likely. It's the same similar process like you do for any CDS project. So now in solutions you can add your AI models too. So that's the addition. And uh, using the model you can you can publish the model and you can set the run schedule also. And uh, that's one of the additional features like you can share your model uh, across your project. And uh, rules and security. If you talk about uh, environment makers, can make the uh, create an AI model, and uh, obviously CDS users who can use the AI model. And you need a system administrator or customization uh, customizer to access all the models. Uh, environment makers can create their own model, but uh, you need a system or customizer and uh, admins to access all your models in order to uh, uh, do any actual operations. So that's it from my side and. Uh, This is my uh, LinkedIn and then Twitter and blog address. Now try to connect with us in South Africa. Thank you, Geeta. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, thank you, Anton. Uh, thank you. Wow. Thank you all. Thank you, British. Thank you, Geeta. And get, thank you, Anj. I think uh, definitely show some great great things about about AI builder. Um, I like how you guys made it very uh, friendly, like user friendly. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you, you see new things and be like, I don't know if I'm gonna touch it or not. Um, so, so thank you guys um, for that. So, um, right now we let's jump into it with Harmitika because she is back and things look well. Um, so I'm going to uh, pause myself and uh, give her the floor. Hi, please let me know if my audio is visible now. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll just start by sharing my screen. I think it's uh, loading, and please let me know when you can see my screen as well. I can see your screen. Okay. Good. So yeah, I uh, before I start, I would like to thank all of you to uh, give me a chance to speak here. And um, so before I start with a small introduction about myself, I am an undergraduate student from India and my pl part platform journey, it started from 21st April. I remember the date quite vividly because it was a time when my life really changed for good. And uh, till 2019 or till early 2020, I was quite clueless about the technologies I should learn and the things I should follow up. So it was this Power Apps community and the particular session by Dona Sarkar that I came to know about the Power Platform. And that is when when I started uh, like trying out things with uh, Power Apps, Power BI and also the entire Power Platform structures. And this is how my dream of uh, speaking at events and especially I used to do all these things at home, practicing in front of my mirror and all of these has come true. So it's uh, like living the dream for me. 
So let's quickly uh, move back to the first uh, slide, which says that empowering students with Power Platform. And we all know that Power Platform, it is uh, like mainly focusing on business needs. So as a student, when I started uh, learning about Power Platform, I saw that there are this particular things. It can be used by students as well. So in Power Platform, the four important things that is Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate and Power Virtual Agent. So in using the entire things, we can actually create products or especially for students like us who are filled with ideas and it becomes quite difficult for us to while creating a product. It becomes difficult for us to learn the entire back end technology and then create something new. This is when uh, this part platforms comes to use and uh, personally speaking it actually helped me back the price in Smart in the Hackathon, which I'll show at the end of my session. So Power Apps, we know that is used for making apps and portals. And ever since I learned about Power Apps, I have been trying the various options that is available. Like we just heard about AI builders, so I wanted to make a waste segregation app and I built the built a Power App using that. Then Power BI I recently learned about it and I saw that is such an interesting feature. And when I contacted my seniors, I heard that they are data scientists and even they are using it. So for students who generally focus on a particular technology stack, thinking that um, this technology might help them for the future endeavors, I can uh, like after contacting various uh, seniors and professionals, I definitely learned that this entire power platform is quite in use, especially in fortune companies. Next, Power Automate, which is my favorite. I have been using those custom connectors a whole lot, especially for sending emails. And then I have been also connecting it to Twilio and many other. Uh, I have also been uh, like using it in my Twitter. And the last that is the Power Virtual Agent. I am waiting for it uh, to be. Uh, I think it's already in the beta state or uh, everyone else can already use it in Power Apps. But uh, since I'm using a trial environment, I cannot use the Power Virtual Agent in Power Apps. But I really like how it's easy to create the Power Virtual Agent and deploy it in the portals. As of now, I can only deploy it in the portals. And I hope that very soon I can also deploy it in the Power Apps. Next, um, being a student, we are all very involved in tech communities like I myself am a Microsoft student ambassador and then we are uh, conducting events and keeping sessions. So this is when uh, Power Automate comes to the rescue when there are a huge list of attendees and instead of mailing them one by one, we simply run a flow that automates the mail. So this comes quite handy. And next is uh, Power Apps and Power BI together. I would say that uh, especially for those who are into data science and machine learning, if they are working with a particular data. So this is what I did for the first time when I used Power BI. That is, I took the COVID-19 India data from uh, uh, open source data, and then I actually visualized the uh, you know the active cases and the recoveries in India. And to my surprise, I found that the recoveries were quite great. So this is a quite a uh, great tool to visualize our data and then according to that we can proceed with uh, what we want and it becomes quite great. Next uh, para. So I uh, am, I always wanted to create an app, but uh, I am I am very scared of the technology that is included and the coding. It's the bugs that bugs me. So for that power apps comes to the rescue and yeah, it's a life savior, especially when we have to create something in a very limited time. This is when power apps can be used, especially by students or you, we can also uh, like uh, we can also showcase it as a uh, project. We can since we can create complicated and really uh, good uh, real life scenarios we can solve with power apps. So we can actually enlist it as a project and it uh, adds quite a great value to our resume as well since we are speaking it as students. Next, uh, Power Virtual Agent. This gives the extra touch because uh, even though we know that voice assistants and uh, uh, th this chatbots are quite uh, prevalent, but still this quite excites us. So this Power uh, Virtual Agent is like the cherry on top of the cake that acts uh, as the extra flower, extra flavor, I mean. And uh, last, this is the video that I'll show. So a few days ago, that is on 4th August, um, 
uh, that is from 1st to 3rd august we had the smart india hackathon and which was by the ministry of power and there they had asked us to solve a use case which was to predict flood in advance and aware public um, about the incoming floods especially in the hydel projects so we had 3 days time and then we had to create two dashboards this is when i made use of power bi and power apps to solve the use case so let me show the demo okay so what you can see here this is the uh, live data that is uh, coming in this data is coming in from a iot gateway that is loda wan and then this data it is uh, stored in the sql server from where i am fetching it in the form of an um, api so as you can see that this data is live and here it has the flood depending parameters that is temperature rainfall and so on next is the heat map this heat map it shows the area that we had considered that is uh, the tista basin and uh, also it shows one minute yeah let me just move back yeah so here uh, this is also showing the area which where uh, in india that faces the heaviest of rainfall so this comes quite handy since the uh, solution that we were proposing both for the ministry of power so they can actually analyze this data and uh, visualize it uh, properly through heat maps to understand the heaviest rainfall area in india and then they can take uh, the following measures according to their needs and at the okay so it's doing again and at the end uh, here what i have done here is here again we are using the past data that is past data which is again coming from the sql server and here we have shown uh, in the form of a graph and then i have uh, used a slicer to change the parameters and select the range and then we could see that it was actually uh, changing the values so this is so this is where uh, the authorities they can make use of this data to uh, see the range of or the level of water and then in future they can predict the flood level depending upon that and at the last i had also embedded a power app the power app design is uh, not great but here i had uh, kept a login um, login page so that only um, uh, only people from the ministry of power can use it and next here we had redirected it to our coded website uh, for check updates and for emergency information i had used the power uh, that is power automate flow uh, power automate flow which was um, which sends a tweet and it also sends a mail and it also sends an email uh, mail and also a text sms so that people around they come to know so this is the uh, tweet that it shows that there are high chances of flood and is required to take actions so this is uh, what i had made using the twilio api and the uh, uh, twitter connector to aware people around and uh, since this was the end of my slide i would uh, like to uh, like redirect to the link from where i started with so this was the microsoft power platform fundamental um, document that this is the first thing that i started learning with and ever since it has been a great journey ahead so that's it from my side uh, thank you for having me i'm just amazed i'm just stunned at what the the kind of solutions that i produced kind of showing here even good solution architects might not be able to come up with something like this so uh, it, and, it's it's amazing to see the the level of detail and the the kind of solutions that you have thought through and your work with twilio api your work with different things you have worked with the whole platform so i mean kudos to you it's it's amazing to see uh, kind of things like this uh, yeah thank you for sharing then thank and you so much how long yeah. before did you say you started with the platform it was on 21st april just this year this year yeah. a matter yeah. of like a few uh, months that's amazing wow. it's fantastic what you've come up with and big congratulations on winning it on winning the hack yeah, you, yeah. you won it right yeah yeah we did clearly there's a reason why you won it yeah <laughs> <laughs> she thank won so and she just she won a contest and she only started a few months ago that is that's just amazing
I got smoke coming out my ears. A big kudos <laughs> to you. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. Wow. I, I also have some ideas in mind, but uh, since I'm not my, I'm much accustomed with the entire platform, so I am not able to move ahead with it. So I'm in the constant uh, search to learn more. And then I'm also seeking help uh, from others in the community as well. Yeah, you should. I think yeah. everybody is more than happy to help you anytime, especially with all these ideas. I think we can all. I think. I'm not going to agree with the statement that you said that you're not accustomed with the platform much. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably know a lot more than us what? maybe on some topics. So yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, this community is all always available um, yeah. and feel free to reach out to any one of us as well it's directly. Yeah, always open. Thank you so much. So. All right, I think before we start to close out, it's getting close to our time. We wanted to, um, someone wanted to give a, a, just a, a, a brief overview of what's going on um, in, in, their, in, their, in their region. So if we can talk to Ange and to Giza and to uh, Pradesh and also Hamitika, um, if you can give us some ideas of what's, what you guys are doing in your, um, in your regions um, to kind of give us an idea of what's, what's happening. Yeah, that's great. Tomorrow we have our Women in Tech event. It would be great. All of you join. So, um, yeah, as part of APAC event, we are doing it. And Hemantika, before I start, it was a great, uh, stunning, um, you know, presentation, and it was really nice. Great effort within a year. Um, so yeah, uh, we are part of uh, APAC group um, community that we have here. Bizaps. Um, and a power platform community. Um, it's it's been amazing. It's been a year since uh, since I've moved to Singapore. I've been active uh, with the community, and uh, yeah, every day you walk in for the community events, you hear many success stories, and you know it helps you be young, <laughs> and you know uh, makes you learn every day. And uh, yeah, that's the best part of it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jiva here. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Business Application MVP, and uh, I'm also a part of uh, ASEAN's and uh, Singapore Community Lead. Uh, firstly, thank you, Power Edits, uh, for doing this monthly hangout uh, with speakers from Singapore uh, this month. And we are looking forward to having more events like this uh, from this part of the world. So we have uh, multiple, uh, I mean, several community leads right here from this region. So, you know, without further ado, I'd like to give a quick uh, introduction or share some information about the user group and communities here. So we have active user groups in uh, ASEAN countries. So that includes Singapore, Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Vietnam and Thailand. And uh, so I, I think we have almost all the leads here. So we have Paul Solomon from Philippines and uh, we have Sanjeev, uh, Gita, Mono, Pradesh and uh, from Singapore. And Darani Daran from Malaysia and Kasun from Sri Lanka, who is leading the Sri Lankan user group as well. And so uh, we have monthly, so to talk about what kind of events we do here is you now every month we do have a monthly user groups, user group events. Uh, and you know, and also we have uh, ASEAN level events that happens you know, once in a while. So which Sanjeev will brief you shortly. Uh, we'll give you a quick in, uh, walkthrough on that. So um, I will also post the links for those uh, meetups here for all the countries and you know, whatever the user group so that anybody can you know who wants to join, they can join. So in fact, we, as Gita said, we have a Women in Tech event tomorrow and uh, Singapore monthly meetup later this month on 26th of August. Uh, can you guess the speaker? I think he's right there in the call. Uh, is the Chris is there? So it's going to be Chris. So uh, this month he's presenting a session here in Singapore user group. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll just pass the pass it to Sanjeev and give some uh, information on ASEAN level events that happens in a while. Sanjeev, good, uh, good uh, after, good morning, good evening, uh, folks. Man, what a fantastic evening! This is awesome. Yeah. And uh, Hayamantika, my goodness me, man, I uh, you know more people like you, and I think my retirement is secure. You know, this is uh, <laughs> this is just stunning. It's absolutely stunning work at the cost of sounding uh, old fashioned. God bless you. And then, uh, you know, we'll also Thanks. try and absolutely. And we'll also try and connect you with. Uh, I'm not sure you might already be connected, 
with uh, Sandeep Alur, who is the MTC lead in India. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm, he's a wonderful, wonderful gentleman. And I'm sure, you know, he'll be able to provide you that uh, brotherly guidance that, uh, you know, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, I also see, you know, huge thanks to Power Addicts for uh, having us uh, here. And uh, I see our good friend Keith there. Uh, hello, hello. Thank you very much for all the uh, support. And then, uh, you know, our friends here, uh, I got to say, you know, we got started off with 80 people here in Singapore last year. And we are over, what what was the last count, Jeeva? And, our, uh, you know, over 600 people, you know, it's so heartwarming. People go through so much in this part of the world, you know, in Asia. And to see people come through and, and be part of the meetups to actually contribute, learn, it's very heartwarming. We run. As Jeeva was saying, we run ASEAN level events once a quarter, and then we run, um, we have run many hackathons, but essentially we run about a couple hackathons every year. It's the plan for us. We have run one right now, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going, you know. Uh, with that, I said a lot, so I'll poop, and thank you very much, and, <laughs> and back to you, Jeeva. Yeah, and uh, is Paul there? I uh, just uh, on board. Uh, Paul is from Philippines, and... Uh, you just give a quick uh, shout out to the Philippines community there. Paul, you there? Paul. Oh, okay, I see. I, Paul was there earlier. Okay, it's okay. So I think we lost Paul, by the way. So thanks, guys. Again, thank you, Power Addicts, uh, you know, for this wonderful opportunity. As I said, we are looking forward to have more monthly hangout calls from this region. So excited to have other countries like Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand in the next call. Let's see. Uh, actually, Thanks again. Thank you, Kita. Oh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, yeah. sorry Jiva, one thing really quick. We would love, love absolutely to have you come be part of our meetups. Yeah. Uh, inspire the crowd as uh, Chris actually did with Sri Lanka, as he's going to do uh, tomorrow, I believe, actually. So we would love to have you kindly come, get our crowds excited. And uh, uh, thanks a lot. You know, back to you, Jeeva. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's all from my end. Thank you, Gita and uh, Uwe, Keith and Anthony. Thank you. Uh, listen, man, thank you. And, and Sanjeev, listen. Buddy, like your work is um, beyond um, anything I've thought Power Apps was even possible, cap possibly capable of doing with uh, engines and IoT and aerodynamics and God, I mean, like it's some Heath Robinson madness. It's just the most beautiful thing, and I think that like um, it's the bit that gives me hope that one day, like my kids when they when they grow up they won't be sat behind a desk just facelessly putting numbers into a system that kind of doesn't work in the real world like all that kind of stuff where you make your apps like interact with the real world that's groundbreaking that's the bit i love and um it yeah it just gets me really super excited man so if you haven't if you guys haven't checked out his work please make sure you do it is absolutely your just minds will be blown beyond belief it's incredible stuff we we don't hear you, Sanjeev. I think Sanjeev. you're mute. Uh, if I could doff my hat, I will thank you, sir, for the kind words. But the <laughs> <laughs> but the guys are right here. Where is uh, Pradesh? Uh, he is he's he's run away. That's the gentleman oh, yeah, who you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know these guys are awesome. Uh, we've got ten guys right here in Singapore who could individually run a hackathon, and uh, you're seeing mo many of them right here in front of us. Man, we are blessed. I can't say anything more. You know, we are really blessed to have. And then you guys, look at all the heroes. That API guy, you know, now that guy right there, you know. And then we have got Anton, yourself, Keith. And then, you know, what a crowd, man. I tell you, it's, it's a massive amount of fun. And just to give you one little statistic, if you take 1% of those people who are in the age group of 25 to 54 out here in ASEAN and Sri Lanka, that's two and a half million people just to give you a statistic. And we had 600 people, that is 0.02%. <laughs> so you can just imagine the opportunity we have from a Papa Platt, uh, Bizaps, uh, Azure, you know, the, the, the overall perspective. So we would love for you to, you know, please come over, please bring your entire horde and then come attend our meetups, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll take my thoughts here, sorry. <laughs> Any chance to like come that. back to my, my little childhood home in Sri Lanka, mate, I'll take it any day of the week. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
Man, I think this uh, this this meeting has been um, a huge success. Um, the the Hamithika and and Gita Pradesh, I'm blown away. Um, these things are these aren't just for the community. These things are kind of for me as well because it inspires me to see everyone else pushing limits and people just jumping in who started what we all started from ground zero. This is brand new technology um, and people are embracing it and they are pushing it to thoughts that we haven't even thought about um, and see somebody to embrace it so fast and just, I'm nervous now because she's beating me uh, on some of the things that I've done in the last three months. So um, so with that, man, I think um, we are going to sign off. Um, you know, Check us out next month. We are going to try to do the same thing um, within the same time zone. And just be on the lookout. We are going to scan different time zones to get new faces and hear great stories. So with that being said, I'm going to say uh, happy power platforming and we'll catch you guys next month. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Cheers.